Welcome to the News Hour. Scenes of biblical devastation. The dead stacked in the streets, and aid for the living too slow in arriving. That is the situation tonight in North Africa. At least 5,100 people are dead from immense flooding in Libya. The mayor of one city says the toll could be as high as 20,000. And to the west, in Morocco, nearly 3,000 people are now officially counted among the dead from the Friday earthquake. Ali Rogan reports. Scenes of horror along the streets of Derna, the coastal city hit hardest by the deluge. Today, it's a muddy graveyard. Rescuers say there are bodies everywhere, in the mangled upturned cars, beneath the ruins of apartment buildings, and floating offshore in the Mediterranean. Yesterday, Libya's prime minister said the top priority was searching the open water where thousands are feared missing. <laughs> We need specific assistance, especially in retrieving bodies from the sea. The Libyan Navy, divers and frogmen are putting all their efforts into retrieving these bodies. The devastation began Sunday with torrential rain brought on by Mediterranean storm Daniel. But the worst hit Derna when two dams in the nearby valleys collapsed, sending a torrent of water directly through the city center. Satellite images show its sheer force as it washed away entire neighborhoods in its path. Some survivors described a wall of water reaching heights of 25 feet. I live on the top floor of this building. I opened the window and saw the storm attacking us. Cars were thrown around and families started running. The water reached the second floor. Some medical facilities are barely intact. Rows of corpses lay in the streets as overwhelmed hospitals began the agonizing process of identifying the dead. We counted them as they were lying in the hallways. Whoever is identified by family or friends is then buried. There are some who have not been identified, so we started photographing them and assigning numbers to them, then burying them as well. Things are very bad. The hospital is dilapidated. They are mentally and physically completely devastated. I mean, they've lost their houses, they've lost their city, lost their workplaces, they've lost everything. Bashir Ben Amir is coordinating needs assessment on the ground in Tripoli, Libya's capital city. His organization, the International Rescue Committee, is one of the few that already had operations near the disaster zone in Derna. We have heard stories from people who were trying to call each other in the same house while the floods were taking place to the second floor. And some people were over the cabinet and trying to call the other part just to see if they're still breathing or able to respond or answer. The human toll is becoming more dire by the hour. As recovery efforts continue, the death count is expected to rise. And the UN's migration agency said some 30,000 people in Derna alone are now without a home. But the floods have caused extensive damage to Libya's coastal access roads and shut down communication. The telecommunication infrastructure, unfortunately, it's, it's lost right now. Uh, it is very challenging also for the rescue and search teams uh, to communicate with each other. Meanwhile, in Africa's northwest, Morocco is still reeling from last week's catastrophic earthquake. But help is finally starting to arrive. Crews bulldozed through the rubble and brought much needed aid to survivors, many of whom have lived in makeshift tents for days. Some took refuge in whatever shelter they could, like this damaged school building, as they waited for help. We have no food, nowhere good to sleep. It's not just about the collapsed houses. A house can be rebuilt later, but I lost my normal life. Everything from our life is gone. Many of the delays were physical. Remote areas were cut off due to landslides, but some of them were frustratingly political. Morocco's government continues to refuse any assistance from countries like the U.S. and France. Back in Libya, aid has poured in from neighboring Egypt, Algeria, and Tunisia, as well as Turkey, Italy, and the United Arab Emirates. Amir says he hopes the joint international effort will get people what they need when they need it. Before this disaster, um, uh, already uh, there has been 800,000 people uh, who are identified as in need for humanitarian assistance. And now following this tragedy, I'm afraid that this number will um, will increase very quickly in, in a very short time. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Ali Rogan.